Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall, bringing you all the software deals you need, like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2021 with a new Windows 11 design, and even Windows Server 2022. For all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 25% off, getting a Windows 10 serial key for only $16. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. Hello guys, Ancient Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. Since for today's video we have the new review of the new, the new review of the new, Adrenaline Drivers 23.3.2 and as I say in all my videos, 23 is the year 2023, 3 is the month March and 2 is the revision in that same month, so the second revision of March. The previous AMD drivers, the 23.3.1, actually brought some really good and, and interesting fixes for most users that are using them right now, but they also did bring some issues for other users, so it's kind of a hit or miss. It seems like for some users the drivers are great, the 23.3.1, but for other users the 23.2.2 the are actually the way to go. I myself prefer the 23.2.2, although the 23.3.1, if I tweak my overclocking settings once again, is pretty nice and in some cases actually gives some FPS, okay? But what about the 23? 3.2. Do we actually have an improved performance or do we have a decreased performance? The 23.3.2 drivers are actually once again recommended and not optional and they are also WHQL signed, meaning that Microsoft actually approved these drivers, okay? They they uh, they fit the specifications that micro that my <laughs> phones that Microsoft actually uh, actually puts there, uh, so they are WHQ assigned. And once again, they're recommended. It's kind of odd that AMD took ages, and even in the past year, they they sometimes took months to have a recommended driver, and now we have recommended driver after recommended driver. So it makes you think that they are pushing really, really good drivers, or they're just pushing them as recommended in order for people to upgrade, even though they shouldn't be recommended. As for the release notes, we start with the highlights, with support for Resident Evil 4 Remake, The Last of Us Part 1, which is nice because the game didn't even release, so it will be released in like two days, I believe, and additional Vulcan extensions, click here for more information and you can click there for more information if you want to know which extensions were actually added, okay? As for the fixed issues, application crash may be observed while playing Uncharted Legacy of Thieves collection on some AMD graphics products such as the Radeon RX 6700 XT and this is a very, very nice a very nice thing because this is a bug that has been occurring for like some months and people with some cards like once again the 6700 XT have been complaining that they they weren't able to actually play the game because the they had crashes and so on and it seems that AMD acknowledged that in the previous drivers and now it is fixed with these ones so good job Application crash may be observed while playing Genshin Impact on some AMD graphics products such as the Radeon RX 6750 XT, another problem of crashes fixed, great. Corruption may be observed while playing It Takes Two on Radeon RX 7000 series GPUs, so something that some viewers also commented on the previous video, so if it is actually fixed and you play the game with this card, just leave a comment in the comment section, let us know if it is fixed or not, because sometimes it is fixed for some and not for others. So once again, comment in the comment section. Connection failure or black screen may be observed using Parsec Client with AMD decoder settings. And this is a very, very important thing. Don't, don't ask me why, because I don't really know, but I know it's important because lots of people are actually complaining about this Parsec thing. I don't even know what Parsec is, but it seems that uh, with these new drivers, this Parsec thing with AMD decoder settings is now functioning properly. You won't have any more connection failures or black screens due to the drivers and that's great. Once again, if it is actually fixed, leave a comment in the comment section saying if it is or if it isn't, just in case. 
The performance tuning stress test may intermittently lower GPU usage before test completion, also a thing that was happening and it seems to be fixed now. The performance metrics overlay may intermittently resize across the display on some AMD graphics products such as the Raiden RX 6600M, also fixed. And the last fixed issue is the performance metrics overlay have some missing units when enabled or situationally become truncated after changing display settings and I believe this was an issue actually added on the previous drivers. Uh, I mean, it should be there or it could be there before the previous drivers, but it was added as known issues on the previous drivers, I believe, um, and it was it was fixed with this one. So it's great. It's great. Come in. As for the known issues we have, high idle power has situationally been observed when using high resolution and high refresh rate panels on Raiden RX 7000 series GPUs. Now this is quite annoying, and this is quite annoying for because this this seems to be like the new enhanced sync meme. Okay, enhanced sync issue with black causing black screens was here in the known issues for like two years, and I'm not joking. People using the RX 7000 series cards and high refresh rate panels like 240 hertz, or some people using actually some OLED monitors with 4K 120 or something like that. Most people using those configurations or strictly odd configurations have high idle power and we're talking about 60, 70, 80 or sometimes even 120 watts and once again it just can't happen and AMD you need to fix this ASAP. Simple. Video stuttering or performance drop may be observed during gameplay plus video playback with some extended display configurations on Raiden RX 7000 series GPUs and once again this is a problem so if you are actually watching a video during gameplay with the RX 7000 series you may actually have stutters okay this does not happen in all GPUs but a small percentage of but a small percentage of users sorry may actually have these issues and they're annoying actually uh, NVIDIA has their own issues, but these are pretty annoying and should be fixed ASAP as well, the same for the idle power. Some virtual reality games or apps may experience lower than expected performance on Raiden RX 7000 series GPU, so once again, lower than expected performance on VR with RX 7000 series, where the RX 6000 series sometimes perform better than the 7000 series, although they're much slower. That's how drivers affect performance in most cases. It's insane. Video playback using accelerated browsers may appear blurry during upscale on some AMD graphics products such as the Raiden RX 7900 XT. Brief display corruption may occur when switching between video and game windows on some AMD graphics products such as the Raiden RX 6700 XT. Once again, AMD uh, on some previous drivers, AMD actually gave us something like um, we are supposed to fix these issues on the next drivers or in the driver after that, but they, they stopped doing that, which was actually cool. So they would give you the known issues and they would tell you that they, they were trying to fix those issues for, for example, the next driver or the driver after that. It was very nice. I would like to see that again here, uh, if possible. And the last one is mouse cursor may appear invisible in Citrix workspace, which is something odd. As for the important notes, we have factory reset has been temporarily disabled as precautionary measure while we address isolated installation issues that have been reported during PC upgrades. So once again, uh, factory reset is still disabled uh, and you should actually use DDU most of the time. So if you don't know how to use DDU, you can follow this video to use DDU or the display driver and installer and it will work smooth as it should. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. As for my experience with these drivers at 23.3.2, we actually have good things and bad things. Well, every driver has some one or two bad points, but these ones, well, it's kind of a hit or miss. Once again, the good things are better power drawing idle because the 23.3.1 uh, actually increased for me, and I repeat, for me, they increased the idle power draw by around 10 watts, uh, while the 23.2.2 are 10 watts lower once again. And with the 23.3.2, uh, the, the wattage goes back 10 watts uh, below, okay? 10 watts under where it should be in the first place. We also have stable overclocks, so with the 23.3.1 the overclocks had to be tweaked 
in order to be stable once more. And with the 23.3.2, it seems that the overclocks are a bit more stable than with uh, the previous version. So that's a good thing. And also a good point is that we have lots of fixes and sometimes important ones. So that's a good thing. As for the bad things, we also have some. We actually have, well, slower RX 7900 XTX. Yes, my RX 7900 XTX is overall a bit slower. It is slower in Microsoft Flight Simulator and it is slower even in Resident Evil 4 demo. I don't really actually have the full game, so I didn't test it, but I tested the demo, which is basically, uh, which basically is the game. It's just a demonstration, uh, or the demo, as people call it. I, I think it's not demo, it's demo. Anyway, uh, it is actually slower. So if you have a 7900 XTX and you have no issues, just keep the 23.3.1 or the 23.2.2. If you absolutely need the fixes presented on the 23.3.2, then update for it. The performance will be slightly slower, but nothing astonishing. Another thing is that the intake temperatures were disabled and I, I sincerely can't understand it. It seems like s people inside AMD are kind of joking or something, so they actually presented with the 23.3.1 drivers the intake temperatures for the RX 7900 XTX GPUs, the reference ones, which are the ones that actually have the sensor. And now with the 23.3.2, they actually removed the, um, the intake temperature sensor, okay? The, the spot is there because we actually have four spots there, four slots, let's say that, but it is just blank, it doesn't have anything, while on the previous drivers you can see there, intake temperature and it makes absolutely no sense so they add the thing in one driver and in the next driver they actually remove it again makes no sense but well since people were asking i also tested once again with the 5700 xt so for this video we have the 7900 xtx and the 5700 xt where i tested the mighty 22.11.2 driver versus the new one the 23.3.2 and surprise with the 5700 XT, we actually do have a performance increase. It is a slight performance increase, once again small, but it was there, so that's a very good thing. If you are using a 5000 series, or if you're using maybe a 6000 series, these drivers are great. If you absolutely need, and I repeat, if you absolutely need the fixes, these drivers are great. But if you are just into performance and you have no issues with the 7900 XTX, then the 23.3.1 drivers are the way to go, or maybe the 23.2.2. And that's my take on this. And well, guys, that's all for today's video. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video because, once again, that really helps. Uh, and as, and well, that's basically it. Once again, leave your comment in the comment section, let me know and us know as a community uh, which problems do you have, because these videos actually, I believe that these videos actually help AMD to fix their issues and to know their issues as well. I do, I do hope that at least, uh, and we help each other in the comment section, we try to fix each other problems and it's a very nice thing as a community and that's why I make these videos. Also, um, some newer videos will come, like the, the unboxing of the RTX 4080 and some 4080 tests as well, to complement all the other cards that I have. And also, check this video that I released some days ago with the PC Doctor, which is the Season 1 Episode 2, and the Season 1 Episode 3 will be even better, because we have some really, really interesting builds. Um, but basically, that's it. I can say more. Thanks a lot for watching, and see you in the next one. Request flight following. Cessna Alpha Sierra X-ray Golf Sierra Budapest approach. Squawk 5047. Squawk 5047 Cessna X-ray Golf Sierra. Cessna X-ray Golf Sierra radar contact 4 miles southeast of Lima Hotel 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 1900 feet. Altimeter 2 niner decimal niner 2. Roger, Cessna, X-Ray, Golf, Sierra.
How far could he have gone? far could he have gone? Ugh. 